And physics, I think, you know, physics has done this in, in a lot of interesting ways, both in terms of the publications and also the consortia that they run for these large projects. You know, they, they have career models and they have funding models that work. Um, you know, we, in biology, we haven't really done that. And, um, you know, I'm actually, I don't, I, I don't have enough knowledge to know, to be able to say, and this is why. There, I think there's many, many different factors. Um, but I can tell you in the, in the various discussions just around the open data question that we've had. So can I, as a scientist, publish the data associated with the figure I'm publishing in a paper? Talk to the journals. The journals point to the funding bodies. Talk to the funding bodies. The funding bodies point to the journals. Talk to the scientists. The, the scientists shrug their shoulders and say, we don't know what to do. So there's, a, there's a definitely a, a lot of you know, finger pointing going on. Um, there's lots of conferences. There's lots of symposia. There's lots of talk. There's lots of uh, position papers and white papers published. This all happens, right? There's, so there's lots of activity. But somehow it hasn't uh, crystallized into real action and real commitment. And um, if I look at the funding bodies that I talk to, that I work with, you know, um, their commitment, which is correct, is to, to generate the most uh, important, effective, and uh, necessary science for the society. That's what they want to do, right? And that, that makes perfect sense. However, the mechanisms by which they're going after that are completely based in the, I don't want to say the traditional model, but the, 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 the conventional, uh, competitive, uh, closed model of science, of, of biological science that, that, is, that we all work in. Um, is that bad? I, a number of people would say that is that you know that that is a broken proposition. Um, we certainly have generated an enormous amount of discovery. So sitting here in you know mid 2011, what we know today is is extraordinary. What we've achieved in the last 10 years, the last 20 years. Um, you know, you can go back to Richard Nixon's declaration of, of, you know, war on cancer. You know, the achievements are incredible, at least in terms of knowledge. The achievements are possibly less exciting if you just look at how, how have we changed cancer rates in our society. You know, those, those, are, those are much, much more complex things to, to tease out. We've certainly improved detection enormously, and probably in some cases prevention. Um, but we don't have a magic pill that we can give everybody, which is what everybody wants, obviously. <laughs> so. What are the characteristics yeah. of the kind of disciplines that really take this up quickly and easily and with a lot of enthusiasm and the ones that maybe right. don't? What is the difference? Just from your own knowledge and experience. So, so I'll, I mean, my 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 expertise and knowledge is more in, within the biological sciences. Okay, um, so across the sciences, there's you know some di some disciplines have really taken taken it up, and some uh, less so. Within the biological sciences, um, the you know what has to be the best example of sort of open science has to be the genomics projects, and the availability of um, uh, the data and the software and the resources around that whole effort, um, and it's, I think it's important to remember that that wasn't that didn't just sort of magically happen. You know, it wasn't a case where everyone sat around in the room and said, "Oh, this would be such a terrific idea. We'll transform you know the practice of science, and everybody will be happy." Uh, in fact, there were significant efforts to commercialize all of that information and to hold it under a very uh, strict intellectual property regulations and institutions like the Wellcome Trust um, and others, you know, basically fought and invested to make that, that, the, that data open. And ultimately, you know, I think um, uh, showed that 
on the one hand, those resources, the, the data, software, specifications, etc., can be generated and shared with the community in a completely open way. And great value and great wealth can be um, can uh, be delivered from those resources as well. So that has to be the um, you know the genomics community and and the and frankly the mod the current uh, bioinformatics community have to be the um, the best examples of that. Um, you know, and then there's a very broad spectrum. So, what were the very specific cultural drivers that differentiate? life sciences around, you know, the genomics is a really big example that everyone's mentioned, bioinformatics. Is it cultural, pragmatic, that drives that within that community where it might not yeah. be a different research community? I think it is, so my own belief is that it, there is a substantial cultural component, okay? So if I believe that the only way I can get ahead is by holding things, and when I, defining get ahead is, it, it's, you, you should be very specific, you know, that my next grant and my next paper will only occur if I hold things very close, that if I, if I open them up, I will lose the chance to publish that work, that I won't, that my competitor will be able to get money that, or prevent me one way or another from getting, you know, the funding that I need to fund my students, to fund my lab, I'll respond, <laughs> right? However, if so, so if I know that that's what my reviewers are thinking, that's what my funding panels are thinking, that's what my uh, reviewers of my papers are thinking, that's what the editors are thinking, I'll respond. Okay. If I know <laughs> that I can develop, to develop tools, develop discovery, deliver them in an open way, yet, and see the benefits of that, yet still be able to get funding and my papers publish, I'll probably respond in that way. Okay. So what's different, I believe, is is that that, that the bioinformatics community that the uh, you know took on those principles and lived by them, and insist on them. I mean, I, I've been to. Um, you know, large international bioinformatics meetings. And as, you know, you're giving a talk, people are in the audience with their laptops, checking out your website, seeing if what you're talking about is, is actually available, working, correct, et cetera. And it's very common to have uh, questions after a, you know, a talk in a, at a major symposium where someone will say, well, I was just looking at this research you're just talking about, and it did X. Can you please explain that? Um, and um, woe be to the speaker who stands up, um, and when he or she presents, their resources are not available. You know, they will be, tr you know, treated very badly. <laughs> and so that it's that field has that culture. Um, uh, more traditional cell biology, you know, those. It's, a very, very different culture. It's just, you know, you, if I stand up and speak about something, uh, how many times have I been to meetings where people have said, uh, well, what was presented was already published, that there's no new, there's nothing new, or some things that were just not immediately impressed. That's much, much more common. But it's, I think it's completely cultural. It's down to what, as a scientist, um, I believe the response will be for my papers and for my funding and for my students. I don't think there's anything more sophisticated than that. <laughs>